Monday morning to you. I hope your day is off to a great start. Well, I can tell you one thing. You've made a great decision by tuning into Cincy Lifestyle this morning. Isn't that right, Clyde? That is right on point, Mona. Good morning to you. Good morning, folks at home. We appreciate you taking some time to join us. Uh, later on, we're going to talk about our forecast. And, and when we do, you're going to hear a word uh, that will evoke this image that we're about to show you. Uh, because there is just the possibility of a little snow in our forecast. Probably not this much, but watch this dog. Uh, this thing has gotten north of 50,000 hits <laughs> uh, wow. on Facebook. Takes his own sled up the hill, hops on it, slides down, and then runs it back up. This dog is having a great time. Now, this is in Rockford, Illinois, uh, where I guess as a dog, you better learn how to make some fun out of snow. But that looks like, Mona, doesn't that just look like fun? I can imagine you doing that. I, you know what? I used to do that back when my bones were so fragile, but um, I <laughs> love that. It just shows how, how, how smart the dog is. My goodness. And he's real, literally just playing by himself, just sure. playing by himself, having a ball. I love that. Yes. So he, should, he should go. He should try Perfect North. Perfect North has um, some good tubing that he yeah, would have a ball at. He'd be tuckered out uh, after a couple of runs up there. You know, there's several things that dogs <laughs> love to do. That's one of them. Being outdoors, anything that gets them outdoors. Obviously, too, dogs love their pack. They love that pack, whether it's other dogs or whether it's their humans. And so, uh, as we talk about who loves who and who loves what, Valentine's Day. Get that? See, see what we did there? Valentine's Day is coming up this weekend. It is a time to reflect on the relationships in your life, but it can also be a time for some self-care. And one way to do this is through some of your favorite snacks, which leads us to one of our favorite kinds of uh, segments where we're talking about food. We're going to have um, some advice on creating a snacking charcuterie board from Veronica Lopriato, a social media influencer. Uh, Veronica, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me, Clyde. All right, so talk a little bit about what it is we're making today because you explained it to me earlier and it sounds delightful. Yes, so today we are making a Valentine's Day popcorn charcuterie board with various flavors of popcorn and your favorite Valentine's Day candies. Mm, all right, so what do you do first? How do you start? Okay, so first you want to make sure you have a tray with a border around it so the popcorn doesn't fall. <laughs> yeah. And then next you're going to want to get some cookie cutters. I found some fun love cookie cutters and start filling those with your various candies. I got the traditional hearts that say those cute little sayings on them. I got M&Ms to fill the O. Okay. For the V, I got airheads so i fill those with Aww. strawberry flavored airheads <laughs> <laughs> and for the e i got those hearts heart candies and then next you're gonna put in your like quote unquote bowls that they have on charcuterie boards and then start filling your tray with your popcorn flavors i have caramel i have butter popcorn Ooh. i have kettle and then the fav the favorite that white cheddar popcorn right there and, and and by and large how long does it take you to do this oh this took like two minutes <laughs> really it was I, really easy. i thought yeah. we speeded up the video but <laughs> <laughs> it takes two minutes to make. It's so fun. It's so creative. Whether you're with your family, your significant other, or by yourself, it's super fun for Valentine's Day to enjoy candy and popcorn. You talk about it being creative, so you can custom, you can obviously customize this, right? Oh, yes. You can get whatever cookie cutters you want. They had some heart shaped ones at the store, too, if you want to do that instead of words. All right, so uh, obviously that level of creativity uh, that you display uh, is going to be of interest to a lot of people. So how can they watch other videos from you? From me on my Instagram, Veronica's Lifestyle underscore, or my TikTok, Ronnie Lopriato. <laughs> okay, Veronica, you got a lot of ways to check in. Thank you so much <laughs> for taking some time to talk to us today. Thank you for having me, Clyde. Absolutely. Mona? Well, contrary to what some people think, practicing self-care and self-compassion is not selfish. Instead, it's essential to having a healthy mind and body. So where should we start if we want to reset our 2021 goals? Well, we've got someone with answers. And joining us right now is Jacqueline London, a registered dietitian and head of nutrition at 
Weight Watchers, what used to be Weight Watchers, but is now WW. Jacqueline, welcome to the show. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. All right, so what does self-care mean to you and why is it so important, particularly now? Well, I think so many of us are looking for solutions to reframe what it means to get back on track in ways that are meaningful to us. So, you know, we often talk about self-care as being a question of your personal health priorities, the plans that you make to put tangible goals into actionable strategies, and the the ways in which we practice making choices that feel really right for us with the understanding that self-care is ever-changing. It's a dynamic state, and there's always going to be um, differences in circumstances and lifestyle. So finding different ways to take care of yourself is really what it's all about. Okay, so I want you to elaborate on some of the more, more tips that you have and strategies that can really help people be successful in practicing self-care. Creating your environment is key to creating the more successful space that you want to have to on which you can build upon. So when we think about environment, we think about our home. We also think about the tools that are available to you. And the WW app has has limitless options in this capacity. So we have tools that are built through our latest program, which is My WW Plus. We have uh, tips, tricks, strategies. And overall, it's a general framework in food, activity, mindset, and sleep, and creating those healthy habits no matter where you are. All right, so sometimes I have a problem, you know, like sticking to a, um, a healthy lifestyle strategy, but Tell us some tips on how we can make goals that stick. So first of all, start small and keep it simple. The simpler, the better, because ultimately we want it to be something that's repeatable, right? Because if it's not repeatable, then it can't ultimately turn into real life for any of us. And so many of us make that mistake when we're first starting out is setting lofty goals and then thinking, oh, this doesn't really fit within the context of my lifestyle. So start small, keep it simple, and then practice consistency. Consistency is key to just about everything that we do, but it's certainly no different when it comes to healthy habit formation. No matter where you are, what you're doing, practice ultimately builds confidence that we need to form the foundation of healthy habits over time. So staying consistent is key. And then we have, we come to this idea of building community and fostering connection. This, these are essential components of any new self-care strategy or any new goal as it relates to your personal health. So finding ways to connect to one another, whether that's within the framework of your community and or finding ways to connect back to your greater purpose. You know, what is it that you love to do? Where are the places you love to spend time and with whom the people with whom you love to share activities and meals? So that's something that WW, um, that's really essential for us. We know that that's the true foundation for healthy habit formation over time. All right, really good tips, Jacqueline. Tell people where they can find more information about WW. Everything you need is available on ww.com and it, you, you can find recipes, ideas, tips, strategies, everything all on ww.com. All right, Jacqueline, thanks for talking to us today. We appreciate it. Good tips. Thanks. Now, staying on the topic of resolutions, a lot of people aim to be more fit in the new year. But fitness and wellness can look different for different people. So no matter what your journey looks like, there are a couple of mortar graduates who want to help you achieve that goal. Uh, Aisha, I'm sorry, Alicia Stevenson and Roberta McClinton, the owners of Reflex Fit LLC, are with us right now. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Absolutely. So, Alicia, what made you decide to get into fitness and wellness in the first place? So, growing up, I've been very competitive, and my I wanted to compete and be able to compete with the boys. So, that was my initial interest in health and fitness. And then when I was diagnosed with colon cancer in 2016, that made me re-up my game and reevaluate my level of fitness and what I need to do to beat cancer and stay healthy. Wow, okay, so Roberta, y y you're not just helping folks with, with fitness alone, you help people achieve wellness as well. So tell us what that means. That means taking into account of all 
aspects of who you are. That includes the mental, the physical, the spiritual, emotional, as well as the social. And just taking care of yourself and being bringing balance and having and uh, making sure you manage your stress and weight management. Those things um, are all important. So, Alicia, you say this this approach, this attitude is important for women, but especially for women of color to maintain wellness. Why? Why is that? Absolutely. Women, we take on a lot and no dig on men because you do too. But as women, we, we take on a lot and especially black women, just looking at the statistics, we are disproportionately affected by almost every disease, maybe except ALS. But we're looking at diabetes, cancer, heart disease. It's impacting us um, disproportionately. And these numbers have an impact on our physical health, our mental health, and even our ability to overcome corona, for example. So one of the impacts of corona is having a pre-existing condition, which black women have. So it's important to tackle those things and focus on including wellness into our lifestyles and not just a resolution, but a lifestyle situation that we can continue on. All right, uh, we've got just a little bit of time left, but uh, people are certainly going to hear your story and want to get uh, more information from the both of you, perhaps book a session. So how would you advise they go about doing that? Well, they can reach us at 513-216-3017. Um, uh, they can email us at info at bereflexfit.com. They can also reach us on Facebook at, at reflex. I'm sorry, B Reflex 50. And we are located at 800 Compton Road, Suite 16. All right. And it's our website. And website is www.bereflexfit.com. See, now that's teamwork. Alicia, yes. Roberta, <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so much for being with us this morning. Thank, thank you. you so much. Mona? Thanks. Bye. Well, coming up here on Sissy Lifestyle, it's important to not only take care of our physical health, but also our mental health. And we're going to speak with two organizations that are leading the mental health conversation for adults and adolescents during these tough times. Then the beloved works of Ezra Jack Keats comes to Playhouse in the Park. Join us as we learn more about Peter and his friends through heartwarming tales about the wonder of freshly fallen snow. That is apropos for this week. And we've got all that and more coming up in just a few minutes, so keep it here. Welcome back. Well, in our community, there's a theater that has been offering audiences professional performances for 60 years. And even in these times of quarantine, they are bringing the magic of the stage to your home, virtually. And I want to uh, welcome our guest. He's going to tell us more about this. Danielle Rasmussen from the Cincinnati Playhouse in the Park. Thank you so much, Danielle, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, you're directing the upcoming performances of Snowy Day. Tell us what snow the story is about. Well, if you are familiar with this beloved classic children's book, um, you know that uh, there's actually a series of books about this character, Peter, written by Ezra Jack Keats. Um, so this particular production takes four different stories and puts them together in a little bit of a vignette form. So you follow Peter from the age of three all the way up to his ninth birthday party. Uh, in each one of these four beloved stories, you get to experience Peter growing up, much like we're watching our kids now grow up uh, and explore the snow and explore friendships and try to find their own identity, especially in a world right now where things are, are, are they're new for all of us. And we're trying to navigate that as, as family units. So this particular story is so wonderful because it does celebrate the family experience and the wonder of childhood and finding the joy in the every little moment that you can. You know, your description just puts a smile on my face. I will love seeing this. So is there a part that really resonates with you? 
Well, actually, yeah, it's been really powerful for me to get to direct this show right now. My son just turned eight yesterday, and Peter, going from age three to his ninth birthday party, I I felt like while I was directing this play, there was so much about my son's early years that I was reliving, and so much about what I'm in the middle of experiencing as a parent right now that just really resonated for me. And the biggest thing right now as a parent is trying to find joy for my child, like trying to help him find uh, imaginative play and, uh, and and embracing the circumstances of our time. So this particular play is is about that as well as every little moment as a family is special and joyful. And I'm living that right this minute. <laughs> so that that really resonated for me. <laughs> that, that, you know what, what a wonderful play this sounds like. So if people want to find more and get tickets, how can they do that? You go to cincyplay.com and right there on our homepage, there is a little box for the snowy day and other stories by Ezra Jack Keats. You click on the more information and it will take you to a list of different um, uh, options for different community centers, as well as for the playhouse. You can sign up for any of them. They are all free. There are three different weekends that you can sign up for. You get the link on a Friday and you have till Sunday to watch it at your convenience. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Danielle, thank you so much for talking to us about this really fun special play. Well, thank you so much for having me. Clyde? Well, Mona, some of our toughest conversations can be around mental health, especially during these unique times. That's why organizations such as One in Five and Mind Peace Cincinnati are here to start the conversation and direct you to a wide range of resources. Take a look. Over the last year, we've had a lot of jarring changes that have shifted our lives, impacting not only our physical health, but also our mental health. And to dive more into the topic of mental health within adolescents and families is Susan Shelton, the executive director at Mind Peace Cincinnati, and Nancy Miller, who is also an executive director, but at one and five. Ladies, welcome. You know, and before we dive into the mental, mental health discussion, Tell us the purpose of your organizations. Okay, the one in five mission is to prevent suicide by erasing the stigma of mental illness and promoting optimal mental health for all. Um, and one, the main way that we do that is by doing programming and education in schools, and that's education for students, parents, and staff. So the mission of MindPeace is to um, help develop a system of care for our kids and adolescents. And a big work, a big piece of our work is. Um, helping promote a different model of school-based mental health services. So MindPeace partners with 19 mental health agencies mm. and 180 plus schools to have co-located mental health partnerships in schools. So that's a big focus of our work. Talk about why it's so important to educate and have these conversations about mental health within the education system. Well, the, when we first started looking at doing this work, um, what became very apparent to me is that mental illness starts very young. Mm. Um, we use the, the statistic all the time, by the age of 14, 50% of mental illness has surfaced. By the age of 24, 75% has surfaced. Um, and today, the average amount of time it takes someone to get into service is eight to 10 years. Um, so it's very, it was very clear to me that the, you want to do education in the schools and that you want to do it as early as you possibly can so that we can identify kids and we can get them into service as quickly as possible. And by having therapists now in the schools that mm -hmm. there's a trusted professional there. And then we start developing these systems at the neighborhood level where you have access to treatment, interventions and prevention. And we collaborate with great groups like Nancy's organization one and five to provide that you know those those programs that are in the intervention and prevention world so, and that's really how the state of mind series got started because mm. how do you get this information important information out to parents out to teenagers and also out to school staff and so Nancy and I collaborated and came up with this idea of a virtual um, you know, video and live streaming. I don't know. We've tried a lot of different, <laughs> yeah. things. a lot of cool subject areas that we hope will be helpful to families and kids and, and also to school staff. 
So, so when we first started, we looked at what are the big areas out there. And so we talked to professionals out there. So we covered topics like self-care, dealing with anxiety and stress, dealing with grief and loss of, of um, you know, our, our daily life as we know it. Um, uh, what else? Looking at signs and symptoms and, and some of the topics so that parents had and, and teachers had and kids had access to those kinds of resources that would help them during this time. Yeah, I think that's a, a great way to kind of close out some of our thoughts here is what is the best way for both organizations to learn more information and maybe even get in contact with you? So our website does have a wealth of information. It's everything from, um, you know, self-care, mindfulness, um, all the way through signs and symptoms, resource numbers for emergency, all of that is out there. Plus, we have a lot of storytelling videos that are available. Um, our contact information is all out there, and that website is one in five. It's the number one, the letter N, the number five, dot org. Mind Peace, the website also has a great, um, a, a lot of resources. It's www.mindpeace, M I N D P E A C E, Cincinnati.com. Well, Nancy, Susan, this has been very informative, and we really appreciate you taking the time today. Thank, Thank you. you. Sunny now, but it's going to cloud up today before the snow moves in, probably around 5 this evening, possibly uh, and several inches of snow overnight to cover the roads at least. Temperatures warm to 35 today. And that's Cincy Lifestyle for this Monday, February the 8th. Be sure to uh, check us out, uh, reach out to us. In the meantime, make it a great day. Hey, thank you so much for watching our video. Now, if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, be sure to make it a great day.